I'm showing Andrew Collins, two of my favorite players. Andrew Collins, my son, Brad. Watch how he creates a lag. There's a sequence you do in the swing. It's rotation, drive of the hands, and then snap. All in one motion, but they have to be in the proper sequence. Rotation, the drive of the hands, it creates a lag. You take the knob initially, then the hands towards the point of impact, and you have a snap. It takes a while for the snap to catch up. That's why you think all in one instant. Even on low pitches, watch Brett's lag go down and drive it. Both these guys demonstrated very well. Uh, ran across this footage. This is from Brett. Had won the softball magazine home run derby twice. Andrew Collins was an up and coming star. In, uh, in a tight finals, Andrew Collins uh, tied him and then went ahead with the win. And of course, Andrew Collins from that point on went on to become one of the elite players in softball, men's major World Series MVP. And, and as far as Brett, I made him stay home and count by the soybeans. So. I want to talk about lag and snap and how related to a really nice guy we had at camp here. 53 year old, not a very big guy, stocky, but not very big, Barry. And Barry had a nice rotation, but Barry had a real draggy swing. Watch the way he drags it around. There's no lag and snap. There's no sequence of rotation, driving the hands and snapping in one motion. Uh, and one thing he could only swing at was low balls because uh, with that draggy swing, that swing that he pulled and pushed around in an arc, you could see that uh, any pitch that was up high, he was afraid to uh, swing at because it felt a lot better on the low pitches. And he started out with an average of uh, 59 miles per hour, which at 53 years old, and a, and a guy who's a good athlete, you can see he's very athletic, not very fit, not very strong. Um, he doesn't, not a, not a gym rat. That's one thing he improved on, but he told me his goal was to hit one over the, he'd die a happy man if he could hit one over a 300 foot fence. And so we went to work on Barry and, and looked at some of the things we can improve. Getting this connection back and getting that bat parallel to the ground so if the knob is facing down you tend to get more loop. But look at these opening drills, he's just dragging it around. There's no lag and snap. Even on the rope drill here using the swing simulator, there's a drive of the hands which is better because that just intuitively works well. But watch how he starts to try to, there's a little bit more drag, you can notice it here in slow motion. He's trying to snap real early from the very start which is great but he's snapping ahead of the sequence of getting the lag out ahead. Also he steps into the rope and he tends to lunge afterwards and I think that's all uh, part of the consequences of not getting the proper sequence of rotation lag and snap. One thing he didn't do was he didn't swing up which was great. So swinging off the tier, watch how there's just a drag. There's no defined lag and snap. See that? It's, a, it's just a swinging around in a pure arc but no lag and snap within it. Watch the, you can see he's forcing the bat head forward already and watch the wrist, there's no snap. No lag and snap before imp impact. Watch Brett here, the rotation, drive of the hands and then a really defined snap. You can see that and that's what the lag sets up. And that's what Barry has to work on and that's what we all have to work on to get more power. There's the lag within the rotation and then the following snap. Again, all done in one motion too fast to analyze, but have to have that proper sequence. And on Barry you can see here there's, there's just no snap. He's just dragging it through. That's why he had such a low exit speed at the start. So as we continue around here on the drills, you can see here again, there's a slow defined drag around. Something that we had to identify and correct. One thing in this fast sequence, you see he keeps moving back. I said, hey, you should be at the front of the plate, but he can't hit a pitch across his chest. So a lot of improvement on the rotation, a lot of improvement on just the driving of the hands. But uh, again, these same flaws were predominant throughout the whole swing. Again, we have to think and get that pitch between the waist and chest, rotate, drive the hands and create a lag and snap all in the proper sequence. Again, on Collins, just an absolutely beautiful swing here. A little bit lower pitch. You always want to take the hands, the knob initially, then the hands down to where the ball is going to be, the point of impact. Let the ball drop into that zone as you see Brett do right there. So to get a little better rotation when he's a diagonal torque drill, Barry's rotation was good. He simply lost, I think, 25 pounds lately. But to keep him from rotating and lunging ahead at the end of the rotation, the Frisbee drill is awesome for converting that linear into rotational force. Did that very well. Swing simulator, even here in the camp, he was driving it better. Um, he still got a, a ways to go on that. That'll be his improvement, but you can't, you got to get that lag and snap, and the swing simulator just works really well. His bat path was always at a good angle. We used a four and a half pound jimmer stick here, and the jimmer stick really makes you feel the weight. You can see him right here. There's no lag and snap right there. He's, he's trying to do it more in a homogeneous motion, there's no separation. See, there's more of a drag around back, and that's what the heavy bat, the heavy four and a half pound jimmer stick made him do. So, 
certainly to work on these things, Barry's goal was to hit over that 300-foot fence. If you create more lag and more snap, Barry, watching the swing simulator video that Brad did, they're using the slide tube or using the swing simulator, drive the hands forward and then flow into the snap. You know, drive and snap. Get that proper sequence. Here's Abby from an up above angle with the uh, swing slide tube, rather. And then the swing simulator. Again, watch the rotation, the drive, linear force, motion the hands forward, and then the snap. Uh, certainly that's going to make a big difference on it. Uh, you can really see it refined here, lag and snap. And so we want to, wanted to work on a few things here at the end. Again, Abby here, one last thing, she's using the simulator to just try to really force the wrist snap and get it down. So Barry at the end here, working on all the other things, not quite getting the lag and snap properly, you increase from 59 average to 71. Uh, 21 mile per hour increase. If you can get up to 78 or 79 miles per hour, you hit, I think, four balls 76 in a row. If you get up to 78 or 70 miles an hour, you're going to be hitting uh, home runs with that swing. Just awesome to have you in camp. And again, you had some nice shots here. Uh, I think, too, by creating a better lag and snap, you aren't going to want to lunge at the end. You won't want to buckle that front leg because you're going to go ahead and have a nice lag and snap, cut swing, and that'll keep your body from chasing ahead. Awesome finish, Barry. Thank you. Game at the bottom. 57 miles per hour. Six.